My next guest is the fifth ranked Bellator women's flyweight, and you can catch her next fight at Bellator 282. That will happen on June 26th, where she will be taking on Brazil's Ilara Joanne. Of course, I am talking about Alejandra Azul Lara. So Alejandra, first and foremost, thank you so much for being here. I'm a big fan of you, and I've been wanting to talk to you for a minute. And just how are you? Like, you fought recently, and I just want to know kind of what you've been up to since your most recent fight. Hi, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And uh, well, I am uh, training since I'm here in Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. I started living here like four years ago, but I'm always feel like I'm in a training camp. Uh, I always want to be learning and training and, you know, also recovering from the injuries and everything else. That was my, my goal till this last fight. And yeah, a lot to to work on. And I I, I feel like I'm starting in this. I, I'm, uh, I, I had these amazing challenges with being not really much prepared, but uh, I, I feel a different fighter now. I feel after every fight, even if if I lose, uh, I, I change and I transform and I uh, improve. And that's what I expect to show in my next fight. I, looking back at you, you haven't been in the promotion for all that long. You made your debut in the promotion in 2017. And when I think about somebody who has joined a promotion right away and has been exposed to all the things that you have been exposed to, getting the title fight when you did, you've gone on win streaks, you've gone on losing streaks, and you're not, you, you've experienced all of these range of things but you're still so like new into the sport. You're, you're just starting and you're already at this level. And I kind of wanted to ask you, you've been in the promotion for roughly five years. Is there a fight, good or bad, that just stands out at you as one that you really learned a lot from? Was there one of those fights over the past five years that really made you a better fighter today? I think... Each one of my fights uh, represents uh, different things. You know, uh, for example, my, my fight with Vida uh, was one of the most amazing fights I did till now. And I had to ask myself what what, what what I was doing in that moment to be in that state of mind, because in those uh, in my last fights, I made some mistakes that took me out of of the results I expected. But you know, it's it's everything at state of mind for me. It's like when I uh, made my debut, I had all of that confidence that even when I went with. This girl that was a world champion eight times, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, I was like, I, I don't care, you know, I, I know what I have. Uh, but with the time and with the pressure, you, you start feeling something. And in my last fights, I had like an emotional thing going on. And that's that's a big part of of what you see in the cage you know there are so so many aspects that people doesn't know about and it's something that you as a fighter have to control and to learn how how to be yeah so so focused just in, in the thing you know in, in my last fight was was like oh she uh, she's not uh, stable and I was like what I, I never fell in in inspiring but in that fight specifically I just felt by myself but mm -hmm. it doesn't matter it's it's the way it's the path and I'm, I'm learning my um you hit on a fight that I really wanted to talk about um the Vita fight was by far the most favorite fight of yours um I I loved every part of it and I thought 
you demonstrated what makes you such a special fighter. Um, you're very tough to hit. You're very smart. You're violent and aggressive, but not careless. And I thought you displayed that. Your next bout when you fought Watanabe, it was it was very, very close. Um, and I know you didn't get the result that you wanted. And in interviews, you've said, I made some dumb mistakes. It happened. The Bennett fight, it didn't go your way. But when I go back to that last victory that you had, these two fights that didn't go your way, you're just too talented to be like kept down. And does that kind of motivate you in sense? Like you're, I feel like you've only unlocked a very small fragment of how good you really are. And just for whatever reason, bad luck, judging, Mm -hmm. whatever, we just haven't been able to put it all together. Do you feel really like this is going to be a fight very similar to the Vita fight where everyone was just really, really happy at the result and the blood? I know I was. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I know. I know. And every time I I see that, I I say to myself, like, you know, you, you get it. You know, you're aggressive. You know, you're very tough and everything else. Uh, but right now, I'm not that girl. I'm better, you know? Uh, right now, uh, my, my style have changed and uh, some mistakes that I did also in, in the Vita's fight, uh, I, I'm working on it. So so I'm, I'm very um, grateful for the opportunity, you know, to keep going and to still being here in the fifth, <laughs> you know, right. that was like, okay, they know, they know I have the potential and I know it too. So now it's the, it's time to, to do my work. You know, I, I don't want to, to put a lot of pressure and say, no, nah, it's going to be, this is going to happen now, nah, but but I know uh, that my, my goal is to be in in flow, you know, flowing and enjoying my fight as I did since I start. Coming off the Bennett fight, that wasn't that long ago. That was in September. Here we are in May. Was the plan to come back at a very short in a very short amount of time? Did you know after you fought Bennett that you wanted to get back in right away? Um, Because not a lot of time has elapsed since the last bout. Can you talk a little bit about how this opportunity came together? And was this kind of your plan to fight in the springtime? Okay, well, it's not my plan. Uh, I mean, (laughs) I have like a saying that when you make plans, God God just laugh. Uh, (laughs) and, And that happened this year because I wanted to fight since, I don't know, January, but now... Uh, I had to wait because of my body, because I had to look for it and to heal. And yeah, right now I'm, I'm dealing with, with things, but I, I am ready to fight and I am excited. But yeah. <laughs> Your opponent, I feel, is v- very difficult. I think she is a lot better than what her record indicates. I understand she's only been in Bellator for a small amount of time, but she's showing how gifted she can be, particularly on the ground. Does she pose, um, let me rephrase that question. Is there something about her that you're impressed with? Does she do something that stands out to you as being very good? Or is she a similar fighter to the ones that you've had in, in the past? Okay, I think that she's very complete. Mm-hmm. She have a lot of strengths, and it's a very good fighter. Yeah, as as you say, it's it's not about the record, but uh, we have a pretty similar everything. In this, you know, like uh, I have also wins by submission and um, the the ages and <laughs> I don't know uh, but I think it's a it's a great match and it can be a war as 
as it was, I, I had I have to to compare a little bit with with Vita because mm -hmm. she had this this uh, base uh, very very uh, strong strong uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, and always going forward and yeah it's very aggressive I think have everything to be a a fight of the night you know I believe it's going to be a very very good fight. Um, your opponent is tough, very similar to your style. That's why I think it's going to be really interesting. But you're a lot bigger than she is. Um, you're five, like six, five seven. She's five three. So I am expecting because of that height difference, she's going to be very, very aggressive and want to take center control and make you back up. And that's easier said than done against you because I feel like you're the aggressive one most of the time. Are you expecting her to be uh, maybe perhaps a little more aggressive than she typically is? No, I think she it's going to be careful. Uh, and I think that that it's the important thing in this fight, the strategy, the, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, pardon me. Nope. <laughs> nope, totally, totally fine. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you a little bit about this camp in particular. You mentioned before that you stay in shape, you're, you're always in camp and you're always ready to fight. It's just making sure that your body is ready when the moment's right to, to perform at your potential. Is there anything special, um, without giving anything away, is there anything special that you've done um, in this camp in particular to, to prepare? Definitely, the weight uh, part it's very different this time because uh, I don't want to to let that in. in you know, I, I need to control that part. And in my last fight, you know, the that Diana she did the she missed weight as mm -hmm. always, uh, but also I cut more than I have to mm -hmm. and yeah I felt a lot that in my body I, I'm re uh replanting re redoing my my things exploring different ways and keeping uh my my weight very uh yeah very low so I don't have to dehydrate so much. So that's my plan. I think that's very important and I'm doing it. Like I've never been in this way in, at, at this time to the fight, uh, never. Like this is the first time I'm in this shape. <laughs> that's fantastic because you still have a, a, a few weeks to the fight. That's, that's really, really good. And I am very confident that we're going to see this next new and improved version of you. I, I know you're um, very respectful of your opponent. I know that you really don't give predictions about what's going to happen. You're confident in your skills. You know that you're going to win, but how you'll win and when you'll win, we'll see next month. I'm not going to ask you that, but what I would like to ask you is beyond this bout and for the rest of 2022, is there um, what would you like to accomplish? Are you planning on fighting a couple of more times before the year is out? Or are you going to just kind of take it and see what comes? Um, your thoughts on what you would like to achieve this year? <laughs> I always like to go step by step, you know? Mm -hmm. My first goal is to win this fight. And after that, let's see what happened. Because, you know, if th this is an amazing performance, everything can go up and, and beyond expectations. So I'm open to that. Did <laughs> I, I was wanting to ask, just with the women's flyweight division, obviously, uh, Velasquez, she dropped her title. It ended controversially. I personally, I watched the bout. I didn't have a problem with the stop. I might be in the minority of people. I thought like a lot of people were really mad about the referee and stopping it. I personally didn't have a problem with it. But with a new champion, that often means there are new opportunities. 
And for you, you're the fifth ranked fighter in the division. You're not far away from getting a chance yourself. Um, I know. Th- that's got to be very, very exciting for you. Um, is there anyone else out there when you look at the women's flyweight mm-hmm. division that you believe is most deserving of a chance against Liz Carmouche? Should Velasquez get another chance um, or should Carmouche get the opportunity to fight somebody different? like you, for example. Yeah, I think there's uh, more people here. Um, Juliana, I was expecting something like that happen. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe not that way, but uh, I don't know. Maybe Carmouche was more prepared. And uh, I, I think it's it's good to to what's the new talent and to prove everyone the division and give yeah give the challenge who uh, to to the one who looks like deserves in, in the moment so i don't know let's see what happens we'll see your division is going to be very very interesting there are a lot of talented ladies mm-hmm. in that division mm-hmm. i think there are two fights that have to happen before we have an idea your fight and then Denise Kielholz's fight. Those are the two fights that have to happen. And then mm-hmm. I think we'll start getting a better idea of what makes sense moving forward. It's going to be very exciting to see. Those are the two fights I suggest if you're a fan of the Bellator flyweight division, those are the two fights um, that you should be paying attention to. Before I let you go, I wanted to ask you a little bit uh, about some questions that other people Um, fans of yours wanted me to ask you. I can't get to all of them. There are too many, but I picked a couple that I thought were really good. And I wanted to start. um, It's a simple question. Uh, This person wants to know, what do you like to do in your leisure time that doesn't have anything to do with fighting? Um, I love to be in nature. I love to camp, to to camping. Mm -hmm. And also to go and walk in the forest and things like, like that. I love to swim, uh, I love the sea and pools or things like that, rivers. And spend time with, with my dog and with my friends and do music. I love to sing and uh, yeah, and to read. I read a lot too. All good hobbies. Um, this is a question from a fighter and it says, Alejandra, I am just starting my MMA career as an amateur. Do you have any advice for me? You know, I think the important thing is to, um, to have a projection of yourself. What, why are you fighting? What are you expecting and being realistic? You know, that, that's very important because if you have all what you need to be a champ, you just have to believe it and to work for it. And opportunities uh, doesn't, I mean, they, they fall from the sky, I think. Mm-hmm. And you have to be ready when they come and, and you just take it and, and yeah, you have to be open to success. <laughs> Always be ready. The uh, last question is, what is your most favorite arena to fight in? Hawaii. Uh, (laughs) All right, the Blaisdale. You know, the place, I love it. I never (laughs) expected to fight there. And it was like, okay, I fight two times there. (laughs) So this time when I knew that uh, Hawaii was in April and they say, okay, I need more time, but... It doesn't matter. I prefer to win in Connecticut and to be great. Then, okay. But of course, also Florencia in Italy. That that was outstanding. <laughs> I, I can only imagine. Um, I would like to see uh, a fight. I would like to see Bellator go to South America and fight down there. I think it would make it would make a whole lot of sense for you to fight down there. But there are so many other amazing people from that part of the world where Bellator can put on an amazing performance in South America. I'd like to see that. And I'd like to see you like be the uh, headliner for that uh, or the uh, co-main event. I think that would be something else. 
Um, so Scott Coker, if you're listening to this, you have to make that happen. Yeah, for sure. That that will be amazing. And it's it's for me very interesting that I'm one of the few <laughs> Latinos that there's in in Bellator. So so it's amazing. I, I'm very proud of it. There are a lot of very talented ladies uh, that fight down there. Um, so anything that can be done to bring them into the Bellator promotion, I think would be great. Um, I really appreciate your time this afternoon. Before I let you go, now that we got all the questions out of the way, I know that you have a lot of people that support you, um, not only fans, but you have sponsors. And I know that there are a lot of people that work to make Team Azul what it is. So I'd like to give you an opportunity to thank anyone that you would like before we let you go today. You know, uh, one of the most important persons in my career is uh, Pancho Grasso, my, my trainer. And I, I'm very open to, to the people who it's always around and, and trying to help in any way. I, I thank everyone who is around me, uh, my, my partners. <laughs> right now I, I'm training with, with a lot of, of different gyms so I, I prefer to to keep that open to everyone who is around me and yeah that's it because you know I'm very uh, I'm doing this most of all by myself I, I never had like a sponsor or, or something like that but but Bellator. <laughs> well, when my, when my show, when I take over from Joe Rogan and all those people, I will sponsor you. How about that? <laughs> yeah, I would love to. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Alejandra, you are absolutely amazing. Thank you for your time. Best of luck on your fight. And I am very much looking forward to talking to you again soon.